Right, so this gorgeous card that Lisa created here, I'm going to do a version of it. It's not going to be exactly the same because I want to show you how we can use those backing papers into the mix, for example. So let me show you what I've done to start with. So I've got the same size background backing card here as an 8 by 8 but I've actually popped this fabulous daffodil backing paper onto there. Now, if I wanted to, I could ink around the outsides a little bit, give it more of a vignette look. I could even paint over some of these daffodils with a wash which would strengthen it if I wanted it brighter but I think that is perfect as it is to be honest and what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer the center like this and that's what we're going to work on now this center um, panel um, it's a little bit small I've cropped it in a little bit because I really want you to be able to see and show off those papers which I think are just just perfect so next so we'll pop that to one side we could actually, let's start off with a little bit of stenciling with this. So I've got the um, the wheels um, set here, which is the, um, and it's got some fabulous, it's got the land of my father's and wishing you a smiley, sunny, daffodilly sort of day. Oh, I love a daffodilly sort of day, don't you, Maria? Do. It's going to be a while till we get a daffodilly sort of day, just saying, you know, time of the year. We might have to hang on a little bit for a daffodilly sort of day, but that's fine. You know, as long as it comes, we're okay. So I've got my um, stencils here. Now these stencils are super heavyweight, absolutely perfect for dimensional piece. Because obviously, if you want it to be thick and bumpy, it's got to have some weight to it. So for mixed media, mini mixed media projects, fabulous. So I'm going to use one of these little mini um, uh, little stencil brushes, which I am absolutely loving. And I'm going to use a couple of colours in the background. I think I'm going to use a greeny colour, which is going to be peeled paint. Now, if you do this with your regular paints, you um, distress inks, you won't see them on the black card. You need to use your oxides for this. So, oxides are opaque, so they'll show up on a dark background. Um, so, it's not one of those things where you can use either or. Distress things will, will, which will all be for naught. You won't know they're even there. So look, can you see that little bit there? Yeah. I don't want to be too, don't want to do too much. I just want to do a little bit here and there just to give it a bit of interest. Break it up, fade it out. And then because it's a stencil, you're just going to move it around and pop it where you want. Let's do a little bit down here. Um, but I am still keeping it straight because I want it to look like it's a broken kind of grid, a broken uh, wire mesh so don't have it at angles like this I'm keeping it um, you know parallel like that and and also don't try not to be too contrived with like each corner the same amount I have to say Maria you struggle with that don't you because Maria loves a bit of symmetry I do you yeah. do it's like oh you got it's like that's got it's got to be there it's like let it go I'm singing it in my head just let it go so we've got that there now um I could stamp the wording on there landed my father's but i'm not going to because i think you know how that goes and i want to go ahead and show you how to um color in the elements so that is gonna go and sit on there so just that little bit of texture see how it's already building up you could even put that stencil texture on your papers if you want because the papers remember are designed to take the ink now next thing is You've got the rugby ball. And we're going to do, obviously, it's rugby this time. And you can use, I've used oxides for the stenciling, but I'm going to use my Baba Castell colouring markers for this. Now, this could you could be using any watercolour based, any water based markers to do this. Um, I just so happen to have these because I love them. They are artist quality. They're fade resistant. They're as, as, as fade resistant as you're going to get watercolour wise, um, um, which is always more fade resistant than dye based products too so if you want this to you know be something you're going to keep on and hang on to for years to come that's a fabulous product so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my um, pen and i'm not going to go direct i've already started this just so that you know we can um i don't have to just do everything in real time we can move ahead a little bit so i'm going to take some colors and i'm going to think of a a lovely aged leather rugby ball and that sounds really squeaky i'm not squiggling hard on that i'm just it's just the glass that's making it sound like that and i've gone with a series of i've got the dark brown which would be the um if you're wondering if you have these a the sepia i have used some um what did i use here orange glaze or did i use the yellow and I've used some, um, this one is, it is, bear with, sanguine, sanguine, I don't know how you say it, 
can I say? Don't even do an English that way, let alone the fancy one. So we'll pop that there. So we've got warm kind of colours going on. I'm going to take a brush and I'm going to start off with maybe the lighter thing. I'm going to definitely go with more of this um, orangey kind of tone here. Because uh, I want it to look like warm aged leather and I want it to look like the sun's, you know, that the, the, the uh, highlights on parts of this. So we'll make that really make a tan kind of thing but just in the middle and I'm going to warm this bit here see how that's just warmed that bit up as well so it's starting to look already like a, a tanned kind of um you know um rugby ball uh like this now I don't know if you know I you know I lived in the states for you know, a while and I've got family there and um but I don't know if this could also work as a American soccer ball. Let me know, those of you across the pond. If it would work, well, that's winner, winner, chicken dinner, isn't it? Even better. Um, so now we've got that all warmed up there. Um, and then we're going to put the dark brown. So what we're doing is we're kind of wet into wet. So not going straight on with that, um, you know, the pen, because then it would be really intense color and it would more, it would grab, especially if my card was wet. So what I'm doing is I'm building it up bit by bit like this and basically um, you know, letting it one colour blend into the next. Now if you want a more intense colour, because it's already really wet that cord, if I was to keep going over this right now and building it, it would it would just you wouldn't be building the colour, it would just be um, sitting still wet onto the wet card. But can you see how much that one's darkened now? Because that layer, first layer was dry. All right, so then I can, um, it is taking more colour. So the same for the crown. So I'm using the same kind of colour palette, believe it or not, for the crown. Because if you look at gold, when you see gold, um, so it sometimes looks almost black. You automatically think, oh, I'll use a gold paint and that'll look really gold. An actual fact, when you look at real gold, there's so much shine in, on it that it looks almost, you know, like I say, black in parts, brown, and with a bit of like, you know, yellowy gold here and there. A lot of it, to make it look super shiny, is actually, um, you know, darker than lighter. With the, it's the, it's the contrast that makes it look metallic. So, you again, look, I'm not. I'm not, I, I don't want to spend forever painting a master piece here. So you think, oh, you've got to do all that to make this look good. I'm being as kind of loose, as quick, and I'm just putting as much effort into it as I think it needs to have to make it look cool, to be honest. I don't think it needs any more than that. It can, I can go a little bit darker. Again, you know, you can get, let's get a bit of, you know, if you want to go really contrasty, you can, you can, put a bit of black into the mix here and there but be careful because it's you know we're talking darker yeah it is it is what you're doing when you add the black even if it's diluted is you're upping the contrast even further so um if you've gone really pastel and pretty and delicate and don't get too heavy-handed with your black ink because then you'll have to balance it all out by making everything else a bit stronger and it'll be like Groundhog Day. You'll keep adding and then adding a bit more and then adding a bit more. Oh. So, you know, just know when to cease and desist, put the paint down, walk away. It's all good. And that's it. So I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow around, definitely under the banners like this, where there's going to be a cast shadow. You need that. If you want it to look 3D, you definitely need under there and you definitely need the base of that ball. Right, next thing, I'm going to... Um, the banner itself, I could shade that a little bit. And I might do that with a little bit of more of a black on there. So I'll pop that there. Wet it, water it down a lot. And then oh, I should mention, I stamped this. has been stamped with um, uh, a, um, what colour was that? I've got it here. Old paper. So old paper um, uh, oxides or even your old paper distress ink. And it's really, it's like stamping, you know, that no line stamping. It looks just like then you've painted it, if that's the look you want. So there's so many different ways you can approach this. 
and I really love this Lisa um, Lisa's watercolor is absolutely gorgeous and it's really delicate and and pretty and I don't want to make it too hard and too strong in the colors because hers is just so so attractive that it, it, it just works really nicely like that but hopefully you can see if I lift that up now you've got the rugby ball in full color and I would then, before I stick that down, you could stamp these as a die for this banner and you could cut them out as I did with the monochrome one, yeah? And you can pop them, obviously they're the wrong colour there. You can make them even more 3D. But what you definitely want to do is while it's wet, shape it. Because the thing is with dyes, and I keep saying, it's like really cheesy, but think dimension. Not just die cutting, dimension. Um, so form them and if you do it while the card's wet you'll find that it holds the shape and it dries in that shape much better so now when that goes on the card it's not just a flat plane across the card it's got some form and shape to it so when I pop it on there can you see how that's gonna now the the either more foam pads in the middle and less at the side will make it give it keep it that dimension. Or if you use the glue, more glue in the centre. So that's the rugby ball. I'm gonna wipe this up. I'll probably scribble some more out there, but I use so little of that colouring product that I'm not worried about it. So the daffodils. Let me show you how we're, we're doing with these. So again, stamped out with that really pale colour, and I'm gonna take the colours I'm gonna use. So this is the. Um, Cadmium yellow, just traditional good watercolor um, colors. Um, you know, they don't call them like sunshine yellow. They're, they're, they're real artists' names, colors that you know, a quality artist paints are referred to as these colors. And it, also they carry throughout the whole of the Faber Castell range. So you're not going to, um, you know, if you use one color in the pencils, in the watercolor pencils, or in these pens, or in the paint watercolors, they all are consistent throughout the range. So can you see, it's a very similar palette again. Now much more yellow in this one. So I'm gonna take that same brush and I'm going to take the brightest of the yellow and I'm going to pop it over there. Now, into watercolor, what you would do is if you wanted to highlight, you would leave the card white. But the thing is, is with daffodils, they're not really, they're not shiny. So you're not gonna get harsh highlights on them, are you? You know, they're, they're, unless they're like fake da daffodils, maybe they're cellophane daffodils, I don't know. Then they would have a shine on them, a bright, harsh line. But these ones aren't gonna have because they're more kind of true to what they are. So I've used the bright, that cadmium yellow on there. Now I'm using that orange and I'm using the orange to kind of contour, but I want to keep a lot of that yellow still showing. So look on the stamps where I've given you a little bit of clues where there's a bit of cross hatching towards the base of the petals maybe. And um, again, just wet into wet, just add in and you can build this up. The, the best way with watercolors or any water-based paint to approach it, if you're a little bit um, worried or nervous about it, especially as well, but it's what artists, watercolor artists do is they'll, they'll not, put it all on in one thick layer and have it so it's super, super strong in that first layer. They'll put it on and then let it dry and then they'll build it up and add another bit of the layer and then add a, bit, a little bit more. And that's how the colors in built up in the intensity. So can you see how I'm using now this brownie color just to go around and just shade around where that little trumpet is because that's gonna cast a shadow. You're gonna get a little bit of cast shadow definitely from this flower to that one and around the petal and then you were almost done with that see you honestly you really don't need to labor over it just make a decision say right i've gone three colors yellow's the lightest that bright yellow is going to be the the base color for the thing i'm going to use the orange for the mid for a subtle highlight and that way i've got a lot definitely got shadow like around where one petal overlaps the next or in the center where the center of the trumpet is darker because the light's not in there that's where I'm going to pop a little bit of this brown and I've got my daffodils sorted right so green let's pop a little bit of that I'm not going to do any more there don't need it no don't need it no when to cease and desist walk away let it be 
as the Fab Four would say. Again, singing it just in my head. You're all safe. Let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be. There must speaking, be an answer. There is an answer, Maria, and I'm speaking words of wisdom, just let it be. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> this is, the, you kind of might, you know, think that's kind of, oh, quite humorous, but it's not when it's your life. We do this all the time. It's, <laughs> yeah, people, company love us. <laughs> We're really popular. <laughs> oh, will I ever stop? So, right, we've got daffodils coloured in, and I'm going to wipe this off now. Let me show you. I think we've got enough of the elements to put that together to show you how it's going to look. Shall we stick it together? Let's do it. Let's. So, we've got the base card. Voila. We've got the background card. I'm going to use a bit of this fabulous glue and splodge like this. Thank you very much. And. Just make it centered. The good benefit of a wet glue is you got a little bit of play time and a little bit of wiggle time. And if you've got if you've got astigmatism now, I'm trying to do this. Fortunately, Maria, so I think you've switched the camera because this is where you get my head in the shot. Because you have to look directly over it. This is where I, you know I don't try and I don't move too much if I can help it. Just saying. Um, but sometimes you have to stand up and look over the top to um to make sure that you've got it um, you know, completely squared off and centered there. So I have my elements, I've got my daffs here. I'm giving them some shape again. And I've got them layered up. So cut as many as you want, as many as you need. You can snip this one up, you can easily cut that larger one out from that little sprig there as well. And then we can pop this guy here. We've got a lovely little spray of daffs there. We've got um, our little um, sprigs and to come across. We've got oh, there's another one. We can lay that one up there, just coming across there a little bit in this one here. I haven't popped the word in on there because I thought, well, you can put any word on that you want. You can have anything um, in there. Um, Lisa's got We Are The Champions. We've got, um, you know, Happy Anniversary and Happy Birthday and lots of different. But that gives you an idea of how quickly you can pop that together. You can pop as many of these little sprigs in there as you, if you want. You can have solid colours. You can cut them out of your metallic cards and have a bit of bling in it. But that gives you an idea of how to colour it in a really, really simple, easy way. And you are good to go. And there's a tiny little bit on this one. I need to just pop out and we'll pop the wheels on there. Um, there you go. And these cut so well as well, these dies. So just little bits like, there you go. Ah, oh, isn't that cool? Very sweet. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Fabulous. All right. Hope you enjoy that. And obviously, it's the same process with any of the other, um, you know, um, nations. Have some rugby balls coloured in. Colour in your footballs if you want to do them, them full colour or if you want monochrome. And then, you know, colour in your element set, mix, mix and match, swap them out for, you know, that particular card. I hope that's helped. Thanks all.